Elizabeth Gaunt's execution on October 23, 1685, remains one of the most tragic and poignant events in English history. As the last woman executed for a political crime in England, Gaunt's story is intertwined with the turmoil of the Monmouth Rebellion and the infamous Rye House Plot. Her death not only highlights the brutality of the period, but also serves as a testament to her unwavering commitment to charity and compassion, even in the face of grave danger. Elizabeth Gaunt was born around 1630, into a devout Anabaptist family in London. She was the daughter of Anthony Fothergill of Brownburg, Ravenstonadale, and her life was marked by her deep religious convictions and acts of charity. Along with her husband William, she lived in the parish of St. Mary, Whitechapel, where they were involved in Whig politics, a movement that opposed the absolute monarchy of the Stuart kings and sought to protect the rights of Parliament and Protestantism. Gaunt was well known in her community for her generosity and commitment to helping those in need, especially victims of religious and political persecution. Bishop Burnett noted that she spent her life in acts of charity, visiting the jails and looking after the poor of what persuasion soever they were. Her dedication to aiding the oppressed would ultimately lead to her tragic demise. The Rye House Plot of 1683 was a conspiracy to assassinate King Charles II and his brother, the Duke of York, later James II, in an effort to prevent the Catholic James from ascending to the throne. The plot failed, and its discovery led to a wave of arrests and executions of those involved. Although Gaunt was not directly connected to the conspiracy, her later actions would draw her into its deadly aftermath. In 1685, during the aftermath of the Monmouth Rebellion, a failed attempt by James Scott, Duke of Monmouth, to overthrow King James II, Gaunt provided shelter to James Burden, a fugitive who had been involved in both the Rye House Plot and the Rebellion. Gaunt, known for her charitable work, helped Burton escape to Amsterdam, unaware that this act of kindness would cost her life. Burton was later captured and in an effort to save himself from execution, betrayed Gaunt to the authorities. Despite having no involvement in the Rye House Plot itself, Gaunt was arrested and charged with high treason for aiding Burton. The trial against her, held at the Old Bailey on October 19, 1685, was widely regarded as a show trial. Historian David Hume later wrote, He, Burton, received a pardon as a recompense for his treachery, and she was burned alive for her charity. During the trial, Gaunt's demeanor was striking. She considered her trial a form of martyrdom, and reportedly maintained such good humor that the audience was moved to tears. Despite the clear injustice of the proceedings, she was sentenced to death by burning, a punishment reserved for women convicted of treason. Unlike most executions of the time, Gaunt was denied the mercy of strangulation before the flames consumed her, meaning she was literally burned alive. On October 23, 1685, she was the last woman to be burned alive in England for political reasons at Tyburn. Her composure and bravery in the face of such a horrific death left a lasting impression on those who witnessed it. William Penn, a contemporary and founder of Pennsylvania, reported that Gaunt died with a constancy, even to a cheerfulness, that struck all that saw it. Gaunt's execution marked the end of an era, as she became the last woman in England to be executed for a political crime. Her death is remembered as a symbol of the extreme punishments of the time and the dangers faced by those who dared to act with compassion in a period of intense political and religious conflict. Elizabeth Gaunt's story is a poignant reminder of the harsh realities of 17th century England. Her life, marked by acts of charity and a commitment to helping those in need, was tragically cut short by a judicial system that punished dissent and defiance with brutal severity. Today, Gaunt is remembered not only as a victim of political repression but also as a martyr for her faith and compassion, a woman whose legacy continues to inspire those who champion justice and mercy.